Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about choices. We make choices every day. Some are easy to make and some are more difficult. Sometimes you just do things without much thought. Other times you struggle. Should I do this or that? Today's scripture takes a look at the story of Jonathan, the son of King Saul, who wanted to see God do something to help the Israelites in their battle for freedom from the Philistines. When the Israelites came into the land of Canaan, God told them he would not remove all their enemies immediately because that would help them to stay strong and to keep them trusting in the Lord. If you have ever wondered why you have to struggle, this is why. You may not have actually enemies and fight like soldiers, but our daily life is a struggle and this is why. God wants us to trust him. God wants you to be strong in the spirit and continually trust him. The struggles you face force you to be strong in the Lord and to trust God. But the truth is, we don't always want to do that. We have to make choices every day to trust Jesus. It is so easy to complain and think we, our life is so hard. Sometimes you trust God and sometimes you do whatever you feel like doing. Sometimes you trust God and sometimes you don't. You make bad choices. Sometimes you fail and sometimes you sin. But you make those choices. Nobody makes you. You made those choices. So the question is, how do we do the right thing? How can we learn to trust God? Let's look at 1 Samuel 14. In this story, Jonathan was frustrated with waiting. I know for people, waiting is sometimes the hardest thing to do. The Philistines controlled the country. Jonathan was the prince. Jonathan expected God to help him. King Saul was the king, obviously, and he had 600 really good soldiers kind of taking a rest down in the valley. You see the mountain? The Philistines were at the top. All the soldiers are at the bottom. The priest with the Ark of the Covenant was with the king. Remember, the Ark meant the presence of the Lord. So the king could find out what God wanted him to do by asking the priest, and he would pray, and God would show him. But Jonathan is on his own. He's got an armor bearer. He's at the bottom of this mountain. And he's going to test God to see if he should attack the Philistines, just him and his armor bearer. So he knew that if he started to climb this cliff, he would expose himself and he could easily be killed by the Philistines. You can't climb a cliff like that and swing a sword in a fight. So King Saul and his 600 soldiers are under the trees, relaxing, having lemonade, taking a nap. And jo Jonathan said to his armor bearer, I'm going to expose myself to the Philistines. I'm going to come out. And if they say, come up here, we're going to believe that God's telling us to come up. So you got to ask yourself, how could Jonathan have the faith to do this? Had he tested God before and had God helped him? Or was he just a reckless individual? I believe that Jonathan had faith. I believe that he trusted God because God had helped him before. So that's my premise. He had learned to trust God and he had it in his spirit. If the Philistines came up, came and said, come up here, he would know that God was with him. A couple of years ago, I was witnessing at Ball State down in what we call the village. If you're not from Muncie, you won't know that there's a couple of streets where there's a bunch of restaurants and bars and, and places to, to play games and b bowling or, or uh, billiards or whatever. Uh, so one night, me and a friend named Ron, we were out sharing the gospel. It was in the evening. It was after midnight. And we saw these two guys walking down the street. And in my spirit, I just felt, I got to talk to these guys. And uh, 
they were about a block ahead of us, so we kind of jogged to catch up to them, and they, they went into a bar. And I said to Ron, let's just pray that uh, John and Trevor, let's just call them that, that they come out of the bar and we get a chance to talk to them. So we sat down on the curb and we prayed, and it wasn't a minute later these two guys come out of the bar. So we hollered at them and said, hey, we got to talk to you guys. And they said, who are you, the parking lot police? And anyways, we introduced ourselves and we said, we prayed that John and Trevor would come out of the bar. And they started laughing. The guy said, my name's John, but this is Turner. So we didn't quite have it correctly, but we almost had their name. And then Turner tells us, he said, I can't believe that two Christians are trying to share the gospel with me tonight. He said, I tried to kill myself. He said, I got a revolver at home and I put one bullet in it and I spun the revolver and I shot myself and nothing happened. He said, I did this seven times. Seven times he spun it and he, took a sh he pulled the trigger. He could have died any of those times, but he never died. And I said, God loves you. God cares about you. I knew that I had to talk to you. And long story short, Turner surrendered his life. He accepted Jesus. He repented of his sins. He accepted Jesus. And we exchanged phone numbers, and he went home. And we went home. It was about 1 o'clock in the morning. So the next day, I'm all excited. I'm thinking, I'm going to follow up with Turner. And I went to his apartment, and he wasn't there. And his roommate said he was visiting some girls in the girls' dorm. So I walked over to the girls' dorm. And, of course, I'm not a Ball State student. They wouldn't let me in. But the girl at the counter, she said, Are you that Pastor Bob that he was talking about? I said, Yeah. And he's like, she said, He told me all about it, how he tried to kill himself. And then he met you later on in the evening. And he surrendered his life to Jesus. And she was all excited. And uh, I never did get to see him that night, um, but God really touched his life. So you might ask, how did I know their names were John and Turner? Well, first of all, I got John and Trevor, but Trevor's really close to Turner. I didn't pray and pray about it. I just said, let's just call them this. So it was like the Lord just dropped it into my spirit. Sometimes we think if a Christian hears from God that he's just weird or super, super spiritual. Well, I'm not super spiritual. Maybe you think I'm weird, but I think it's normal for God to guide us. A lot of times we, we just decide we're going to do something. And it's like God put it in our heart to go do it. You got to ask yourself. Is what I'm thinking biblical? Is it a good thing? Is it a moral thing? Is it a blessing to somebody? Or is it go against the Bible? Is it against God's will? We can know if God's leading us if we're walking with God, if we're agreeing with the Word of God. So it's important if you want to be led by the Spirit to read the Bible for yourself. I've read the Bible through over 20 times. And I continue to read the Bible daily. And people think, well, doesn't that get boring? No, it doesn't. Because God, by the Spirit, actually reveals things to you as you read the Bible. You can read the same passage ten times and get something different that, that just speaks to your spirit. Once I was counseling a girl who had been gang raped by 15 guys. That means she had sex with 15 guys in order to join the gang. She wanted to join the gang, and that was the initiation. And she thought she could handle it. She was only 15. She couldn't handle it. She went a little bit nuts, and uh, she had a lot of mental issues. And so her mother called me and said, Bob, can you help her? And so I met with her, and uh, she didn't want to talk to me. Her mother made her talk to me. And I said, I can prove to you that God loves you and that he cares about you, and that he can help you. And she said, no, you can't. And I said, yeah, I can actually. I said, the Lord just told me something really bad happened to you. You were in the backseat of a car and somebody hit you. And she said, that's true. 
My dad got mad at me one time and he turned around and smacked me across the face. I said, I'm sorry that that happened, but God showed it to me. I said, it, she said, well, maybe that was a lucky guess. Give me another one. And I just closed my eyes and I saw in the spirit a big, white, fluffy dog and a green swing set. I said, when you were a little girl, you had a green swing set and a white, fluffy dog. And she said, how did you know that? There's no way you could have known that. Did my mom tell you? I said, no, your mom asked me to come over here and talk to you. That's all. And so she said, okay, so maybe God can help me. And uh, I was able to help her by the grace of God. Um, it's a terrible thing that she willingly was raped by 15 guys. That Nobody should have to go through that. But she didn't know what she was doing. And uh, I'm not judging her. By the grace of God, he, he brought some healing to her. She was able to let go of the pain and the, the anger and um, and God touched her life. But I want to warn you, do not think that you can just close your eyes and get thoughts and it's always from God. It's important if you want to hear from God that you read the Bible. It's important that you agree with the Bible. It's important that you surrender your life to Jesus, that you begin to follow Jesus, that you... Uh, are led by the Holy Spirit. I once taught a class on hearing from the Lord, and th then I didn't see this guy for two months, and he, I saw him after two months, and he said, I'm gay. I'm like, what do you mean you're gay? He was married when I saw him two months ago. He said, the Lord told me to leave my wife, and, and now I'm gay. And I said, that's not biblical. That's not the Lord. And he wouldn't agree with me. He said, I had a bright light, and this voice came to me in the night. And he was going on and on. Well, Mormonism was started by somebody that had a revelation from a demon. Islam was started by somebody that had a revelation from a demon. That does not mean you're hearing from God. People can be deceived. You must listen. You must read the Bible. You must listen to the Bible. You must hear the Bible. Anything that contradicts the Bible is not from the Lord. You're being deceived. Jesus called Satan the father of lies. The biggest way people are deceived is by Satan lying to them. So it's really important if you want to be led by the Holy Spirit that you read the Word of God and that you understand that if anything contradicts, goes against the Word of God, it's not from Jesus. It's not from the Lord God Almighty. Okay. Hopefully you'll understand what I'm saying. But let's go back to Jonathan and his armor bearer. He stepped out in faith. Thankfully, Jonathan had his armor bearer. Jesus sent people out two by two. God works with pairs. You need to have a good friend to help you sometimes. Secondly, Jonathan put himself at risk. If you want to be used by God, you have to be willing to risk you have to be willing to step out in faith. Something happens when you step out in faith. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently means aggressively, continually, persevering, never giving up. I know lots of people that have gotten saved and then two weeks later they give up. They don't want nothing to do with Jesus. That's not diligence. Like I said, I've read the Bible 20 times and I continue to read the Bible. People don't understand the word of God is powerful. Your car is pretty useless if you don't have any gas. And a Christian who doesn't read the Bible, who doesn't pray in tongues, who doesn't walk with God is useless. You need to know the Word of God. You need to be praying in the Spirit. It's like having a car with no gas if you don't. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Not just sit back on your couch and pray for a nice revelation. But seeking Him when you're in the midst of life, when you're in a job you don't like, when you're trying to be a good person in the midst of people that are treating you terribly. 
Everybody faces challenges from coworkers, from family. Trying to do evangelism can be challenging. When you're in the midst of challenge and seeking the Lord and you have faith to step out. My wife and I just got back from Kenya and we walked in faith and God blessed us with $30,000 to help the Kenyans. We, we did a lot of neat little projects while we were there and helped a lot of people. We fed a lot of people. We bought shoes for people. We put some roof on a, on a church. We, uh, it was just amazing. But we walked in faith. I put a lot of money on my credit card and I trusted God to pay it back and he did. It takes faith. Faith is risk. As long as you're sitting back trying to be comfortable, trying to wait for everything to fall into place, nothing's going to happen. If you want to follow God, if you want to be led by the Spirit, you must take risk. So notice what happened when Jonathan and his armor bearer stepped out from the ledge. They climbed the cliff and the Philistines said, come on up here. And remember, God said, if they say, come up here, that means God is going to help you. So they climbed up and they got to the top of the cliff and the Philistines were just laughing at them. They actually waited for them to stand up before they attacked him. Their sword would have been tied to their back. They could have killed them right away, but they didn't because they were arrogant. What you got to understand is when you go in faith, people will just stop and watch. People are looking for somebody that knows something about anything. But how important it is when we know our God. The Bible says if we know our God, we will do exploits. People are looking for leadership. People are looking for someone to show them the way. I think people are willing to get involved if somebody will lead them. Christians have the Holy Spirit. We should be leaders. Giving, having the Holy Spirit is having the wisdom of God in you. You have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords in your heart. We don't need to be confused. We don't need to hide. We need to stand up in faith and confidence that God is with us. You have a choice. You can choose to follow Jesus or not. You can choose to obey Jesus or not. You can choose to step out in faith or not. You can choose to read your Bible or not. But I want to encourage you. If you want to have the abundant life that Jesus promised, you need to step out in faith. You need to read the Word. You need to agree with the Word. You need to stand on the Word. You need to have faith. I encourage you to follow Jesus. I encourage you to test the Word of God. I encourage you to stand committed to the Word of God. If you do that, God will bless you, and He will help you, and you'll be an overcomer like Jonathan. God bless you.